Is the right thing always going to be easy to do? Is it maybe going to cost you some friendships? Odds are those people, if it does, didn't want your friends to begin with. And you know, last season on Below Deck, obviously you had some health issues. So how are you feeling now? How is everything going? I'm feeling good. I just, just hopped out of the shower. I got back from the gym about a half hour ago. So I'm still going to the gym every day. I feel great. Yeah. Feel, feel better than ever. Yeah. Yeah. I do. That's good. That's good. I mean, looking back at Below Deck, what would you say was your proudest and most challenging moment? Wow. I think one of my proudest moments was when Marianne came walking down the dock to visit me. Mm -hmm. That was one of my most memorable. Um, there's been a lot of them. <laughs> Gosh. You know, I, I remember when, when we hired Kate, uh, you know, we all have earpieces in and we're listening to the producer and he's cueing me, he's telling me, he says, okay, your new chief stew is going to be walking down the dock straight towards you. And we were sitting upstairs in a restaurant where we could look out on the dock and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting, I'm waiting. <laughs> and all of a sudden in my ear, Lee, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? What am I doing? He said, why didn't you get your chief, grab your chief stew and, and tell her to come up to the restaurant? I said, because I didn't see my chief stew. And when Kate came walking down the dock, I swear to God, she looked like something that stepped out of Vogue. She did not look like, I mean, I'm looking for somebody in a skirt, right. a regular crew uniform, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. No, she didn't fit that line. She had big sunglasses on, scarves flowing everywhere, and definitely did not look like a chief stew. And I was I was really shocked when I saw her. I love that. Have you talked to Kate? You know, she just welcomed her baby. How she? Yeah, I, I sent her congratulations, and she thanked me. And I can't wait till uh, I get up the nerve to go see the little tyke. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of what kind of mom do you think that she's going to be? Oh, I think she'll be an outstanding mom. I, I think the kid's going to grow up strong, mm -hmm. no doubt in my mind. And if he's got his mother's wit and razor sharp tongue, he'll do fine. <laughs> Was there any advice that you gave her? You know, with new <laughs> moms, especially when they're that new, like a couple of weeks, you kind of want to give them some space. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's like, it, that's true. That's there, the best. <laughs> there's, there's, there's some, there's some, you know, a lot of emotions going through, and hormones are raging, and a lot of things are taking. You know, your body's changing dramatically from being pregnant to all of a sudden I'm not pregnant, and uh, it's it's a pretty heavy experience. So I just, you know, I'm sure we'll sit down and talk at one point or another. But right now, she just needs to get accustomed to. I am now a parent. Yes, it is. Your whole world shifts. It definitely does. <laughs> well, um, nothing will ever be the same ever again. So true. It's so true. Looking back, do you have any regrets from last season? I regret that I couldn't do the whole season. Mm -hmm. I really do. Um, I'd never quit anything in my life. And for me to walk off that boat was hard and to admit that I'd been defeated mm -hmm. or at least knocked down. Uh, and getting up was not, I mean, I had to get back up and, and get back to the boat, mm -hmm. which I accomplished, which I felt really, really good about. But having to tell the crew that I, you know, mid season, I had to leave. Because at that point, I was I was more of a uh, liability than I was an asset. And that's hard to admit to yourself. It is. Do you feel like you went back too soon? Did your health have any setbacks when you went back? Or did you feel like it was the right time? No, it was the, it was the right time. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I had to use a cane, but, you know, hell, Captain Hook had a peg leg. <laughs> That's, that is very true. That is very so, true. And one hand. So. <laughs> right. I know. Um, 
You know, obviously, Captain Sandy took over for you uh, last season. Have the two of you spoken? Because, you know, obviously there were some things that kind of played out um, on social media. But have the two of you spoken since uh, you saw each other last? No, we, we haven't had the opportunity to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a conversation? Uh, really doesn't make any difference to me one way or the other. Yeah. Do you regret how things transpired between the two of you at all? I think everybody made, you know, kind of a big deal about it that it didn't, it, to me, it wasn't that big a deal. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I just thought she should have called me and she didn't. And I said what I thought. And to me, that was it. Mm -hmm. I was, there was nothing to get, you know, get your knickers in a wad over. Some things were kind of blown out of proportion. I thought so. Yeah. How do you feel about... Um, because, I, well, it's like I said, I, I would have made the same decision. Mm -hmm. Just would have gone about it differently. Differently, yeah. Do you think she regrets not reaching out to you then? I have no idea. Yeah, have to ask her. You know, you said you weren't invited back to Below Deck, which breaks my heart. But did that come as a surprise to you? Oh, yeah, that came right out of left field. Yep. Yeah, I uh, did not see that one coming at all. Did they give you a reason why? Did they, or do you know why? Um, we'd like to move in a new direction, but I mean, that's kind of a cliche that everybody uses when they find themselves in that situation where they're going to let somebody go. Mm -hmm. We're going to move in a new direction. We want to freshen it up a little. Well, I'm a tired clear cliches that get overused. Yeah. Do you feel like you will come back in the future? Would you ever want to do something like that in the future? Would you? Um, yeah. If if they found out that they needed me back on the show, I'd go back. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. You know, I've done it for 10 years. And uh, I would kind of like to, if I'm going to make an exit, I would kind of like to do it on different terms. Yeah. Do you feel like it was your your health, maybe? Was that a reason why? Or do you think, like you said, just a, a fresh new direction? I really have no idea. Yeah. No, it makes me so disappointed, too, because I love seeing you. I love watching you well, on the show. And I miss so those one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> are you officially retired now? Or are you still going to be doing, you know, charters and... Oh, hell no. I'm not anywhere close to retired. Yeah. In fact, I think I'm busier now than I was when I was filming. Yeah. But I'm still, I still have an affiliation with Bravo. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got two or three projects that are in the works. It should be, one of them should be coming out pretty soon. Oh, that's great. So, so no more below deck for now, but other projects in the works. So we, we, we yes. will, we'll, so we'll, we will still see you on our screens. Yes, you will. Okay, good. Well, that is good to hear. And what's it like being, you know, kind of working on these new projects? I know you probably can't tell me too much about them, but what's, what's that been like for you? It's different because with below deck, I, you know, it was kind of a routine. We knew what we were doing. You know, we'd refine it. We didn't have too many speed bumps other than, you know, the ones that the crew would provide. Mm -hmm. But we knew the boats. We knew how to rig them. We knew how, you know, how things were done. And it was, things ran along pretty smoothly. Mm -hmm. And then when you get on dry land and you get into a totally different setting where, what do you mean we're not going anywhere? We're just going to sit here and film. You know? <laughs> That's a little different. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited it, to see it. I'm excited to do it. I really am. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I've got uh, I've got some great people that I'm going to be working with. And no, I won't tell you who they are. I know. I was going to say, are you and Kate <laughs> teaming back up again? <laughs> you, ne you never know. You never know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I know that you and Carl from Summer House have obviously gotten very close. Will you be attending his wedding? I know you just officiated somebody else's wedding. Would you ever officiate theirs if they asked? I'd be more than happy to officiate Carl and Lindsay's wedding. They're, yeah. they're a great couple. I love them both. And uh, Carl has made such such huge strides as a as a man and as an individual he's come a long long way from you know when he and i first met and first started talking 
and he's, gosh, I think he's over two years, two years sober now. And he's, he's enjoying it. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, what was that piece of advice that you gave him about navigating reality TV without drinking? Well, it's, it's kind of tough, you know, when you see other people, you really get a different perspective when you're, you see other people misbehaving, shall we say, not, uh, and all due because all due to the alcohol they've consumed or overabundance of alcohol. And when you sit back and you look at it from that perspective, you sit and you're like, was I like that? Did I, did I behave that way? And you realize like, yeah, you did. Yeah. And you know, Carl had some, some rough, rough patches where he'd go for a day or two days or three days and things would be real rocky. Mm -hmm. And then when his brother passed, it just kind of like hit him upside the head and got his attention. Mm -hmm. And he thought, what am I doing here? And then he and I started talking because we both belong to the same club that nobody wants to join. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's going to get a lot rougher than this. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing that you can't overcome. And what I told him was, and I've, I've said this many, many times before, you can never go wrong by doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Now, is the right thing always going to be easy to do? Um, is it maybe going to cost you some friendships? Odds are those people, if it does, didn't want your friends to begin with. Yeah. But doing the right thing makes sleeping at night a lot easier, makes waking up in the morning a lot more pleasurable, and it makes looking in the mirror a whole lot better. Yeah. Well, it seems like he's taking your advice this season. On, so I don't know if you watch him on Summer House, but it seems I, like I have been. And boy, that's been rough. Yeah, it has been rough. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. And then it's always amazing to me because people wake up the next morning and they go like, oh, God, did I really say that? <laughs> so, oh, oh, yeah, you, you did. You said it. And well, where did Car are Carl and Lindsay gone already? Mm -hmm. You think? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be out the door as fast as I could. <laughs> I might have left that night. Right. You know, obviously your wife has been such a constant in your life for so many years. I mean, I'm sure you get this question all the time, but what do you feel is the secret to your success? Her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, she's, uh, she's my, she's my stabilizing factor. She's my anchor. She's the one that keeps me grounded and doesn't let me go off on any wild tangents where you know, if she sees me veering off the wrong way, she we sit down and talk, and she keeps me headed on the, not the straight and narrow, because we still like to have a good time. <laughs> but, you know, where I don't do anything real drastic. Mm -hmm. And she keeps me away from the Kool-Aid bowl. All right, well, I know that you are tr teaming up with Drama Mean to launch the Ditch the Drama Sweepstakes. So tell me all about this. Uh, ditch the Drama Sweepstakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all for anything that says ditch the drama. Same. <laughs> Believe me, after 10 years of drama, <laughs> I'm I'm ready. But, you know, planning vacations and stuff is, is, is hard on people. First, they have to agree on where to go, when to go, and how much can they afford, and then we got to pack, and who's going to watch the dog, yada, 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 it goes on and on. But uh, the Ditch the Drama Sweepstakes is Dramamine's way of saying, we'll take care of the drama for you. We'll get it all out of the way. They're going to give away three grand prizes, which consists of a trip anywhere in the world of your choice. So Pretty amazing. <laughs> where where do you want to go? Right. Where can I sign up? <laughs> they're, and they're gonna they're gonna take care of all the planning. Everything's gonna be set set out and laid out for you. So they're gonna remove all the drama out of your out of your summer vacation plans. And let me see when 
yeah, you go to dramamine ditch the com or ditch the drama dot com I if you that. want to enter, and you can enter as many times as you want, no purchase necessary, and it kicks off on the twenty third of this month. Well, I know what I'm doing right after this. I mean, if you could pick any place in the world, where would you, where would, where would your dream vacation be? Obviously, you've seen so many amazing places, but what's your dream vacation? It would probably be someplace I haven't been. Tahiti used to Tahiti in the South Pacific used to be at the top of my list, but maybe uh, the Galapagos or the Seychelles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice. That would Those be nice. Would be the top two. Mm -hmm. How do you ditch the drama when you travel? Uh, let's see, there's vodka. There's... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes me a couple of days. Mm -hmm. A couple of days to unwind and actually remind myself that, you know, oh, I've got the next week or two weeks or however long it is. Mm -hmm. I've got that much time and I don't have anything I have to do. Yeah. So and I've got all day to finish it. Mm -hmm. So that works out really, really good for me. Definitely. Are you a big, did you use Dramamine, Dramamine a lot? Did you get a lot of motion sickness at all? You know, I didn't have Dramamine when I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> the first year of my career, or in my striving to be a captain, mm -hmm. I spent uh, with a little white five gallon bucket by my side because I was, and I didn't know it until I, you know, out of sight of land mm -hmm. on my very first delivery that, damn, I get seasick. And I thought, no, nah, this is never going to work. Uh, I mean, it did, but uh, down island sometimes, you know, it's hard to find what you need when you need it. And uh, so Dramamine would have been a huge, huge help. Right. How and, I, and I, I have used it in the past mm -hmm. during that course of the year when I was seasick. And uh, tell you what, it's a relief. It is. How did you get over that? And did you really think maybe like this may not be for me? <laughs> well, I knew it was for me. I just didn't know if I could, you know, who wants to sit next to a guy that's got a bucket with him all the time? <laughs> Felt like Linus in his blanket. Right. But uh, I just, for me, it was just, I was just determined. Yeah. And when I, if I thought that it might happen, Papa Drama mean no worries. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.